Let's do as you wish and bring an end to this game. <laughs> All right, time for some fun. Ugh, the, the ground is shaking. Tian, my telekinesis won't work. Uh, no. <clears throat> Here it comes. So Nappa here is meant to be genuinely tough, which is why we have so many other Z-Fighters on standby. There are many ways to cheese yourself around this issue, though, because Nappa's AI has some problems. Well, I guess it's actually one big problem, but we'll get to that shortly. Back to the story for a second, it can seem a little unclear what Chaozu was talking about when he said his telekinesis wasn't working. He was trying to attack Nappa's body with his telekinesis, but Nappa was just too strong for it. And telekinesis was kind of a super huge deal back in the original Dragon Ball, so again, it not working was, uh, was also a bit of a surprise. Here's the issue with Nappa's AI. You can keep doing that infinitely, but I decided to give him a bit of a break. So this Goku is actually Kakarot? Oh, this should be interesting. <laughs> what is this? My dad is coming! Nappa! Finish them! I don't want these pests getting in the way! I'm going to enjoy this! So you might have guessed, Tien and Chaozu in the original series didn't just fall in battle or anything like that. What happened first was Chaozu saw no way to defeat Nappa. He thought the situation was hopeless. So he attached himself to Nappa and blew himself the fuck up. Which is why Nappa's not wearing any clothing here, because Chaozu exploded on him. However, Nappa came out of the ordeal without a scratch, meaning Chaozu's sacrifice was utterly worthless. And Chaozu stays dead permanently. He can't be brought back with the Dragon Balls twice. So now that Chaozu's life has gone forever and his final sacrifice meant nothing, you can imagine Tien is pretty pissed off. He decides to charge at Nappa and get himself killed in the process. Which, you know, that's probably what would happen with anybody. When your best friend dies, you get a little bit angry. It, 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 uh, it happens. Finish. No! Piccolo! Gohan, goodbye, my friend. Th thank you. <laughs> Fool. Well, that's one down. This is a really, really good moment in the fight. Because Gohan gets super pissed, just like he did back when Raditz was attacking Goku. Way back then, Gohan was able to leap out of the space pod without any training and headbutt Raditz hard enough to damage him. Without any training, mind you. So at this moment, you were meant to be thinking, holy shit, Gohan's angry. 
Nappa's gonna get fucking wrecked. And then Gohan gets his face beaten in. It's another really good fake out and it establishes exactly how hopeless this situation is. There are tons of times in this fight with Nappa where the characters pull out some new trick and you're like, oh this one's gonna work, it's gonna work this time and it fucking doesn't. They all get dead. Well not all of them, but most of them get dead. Because right now this is just it. Either Goku gets here soon or they're all gone. I mean, never mind that in the video game, Nappa is stupid as hell and really easy to beat, but in the story, they're all gonna die. Maybe if, in the original series, Nappa charged head first in the Kamehamehas over and over, the fight would go a lot differently. Maybe if Krillin hit him with like 30 Kamehamehas in a row, he would actually die. So you finally showed up. Dad! What's with that look on your face? I don't like it. <laughs> I guess I'm just gonna have to kill you. You're going to pay for what you've done! You're going to pay for what you've done is an incredible understatement to the actual feelings Goku felt in the original series. And Goku getting pissed is really bad. He's a pretty easygoing guy, pretty merciful guy, but he just fucking wrecked Nappa. Didn't kill him though. There's a bit more to talk about with what happened in the fight before now though. For example, that brief scene we saw with Piccolo and Gohan. In the original scene, I believe Piccolo explicitly thanked Gohan for being the only one to treat him like a friend, which is a lot more emotional. I mean, thank you for being a friend, that's something too, but thank you for being the only one to treat me like a friend, that's a bit heavier. Hopefully you've noticed that I'm absolutely just fucking around with Nappa right now, and that's so I can show off Goku's ultimate attack, the Spirit Bomb. Here it comes! Go! Before you can use the Spirit Bomb, you have to use Goku's signature move where he calls in the energy from everyone on the planet. This doesn't take very long to use, but it mitigates any charge-up time for the actual Spirit Bomb attack. The Spirit Bomb is used instantly without any charge-up, which makes it very invaluable. It's a really, really good way to fake out your opponents, both AI and people, because if you're fighting a normal person, they might just expect you to be teleporting behind them, when in reality you're hurling a Spirit Bomb down on their ass. You can actually see the Spirit Bomb in the sky right over there. It will stay in the sky until we actually use the attack. I don't believe it has a time limit, I think it just stays there. But yeah, I suppose it's kind of vanilla, but the Kamehameha and Spirit Bomb? I love those, those are my favorite moves. Nappa's going to use one of his special techniques here, but he doesn't seem to do that very often in the game for some reason. He seems to t stick mostly to melee combat. Like he absolutely hates charging his energy for some reason. <laughs>
guys have done enough. Just leave it to me now. Go back to Master Roshi's house. So, Kakarot, do you intend to fight? Yes, but not here. Makes no difference to me. 